Welcome to Vitality. Uh, this is, again, Vitality Natural Wellness, and uh, we are a functional medicine center, and we also do a lot of non-surgical cosmetic work, which is a lot of fun. But tonight we're here to talk about CBD oil, which uh, we're very excited about. So I'm Melissa McRae. I think I recognize um, some of the folks in the room here. I am a board-certified family practitioner, and I've been working in functional medicine for the past five years. Uh, I had a traditional family practice office for 12 years, and um, that was a fantastic experience, but I felt like we, we certainly weren't doing what we needed to do in medicine. So um, I was lucky enough to be able to op open this facility and practice medicine the way I feel it needs to be practiced. Functional medicine is actually the study of medicine where we look for the root cause. Once we find out what the root cause is, we can go about trying to take care of the issues, which also oftentimes helps then with the symptoms, and actually looking for disease reversal. We have three nurse practitioners that are all expert in their areas of peptide therapy, hormonal therapy, and also in injectable therapy. Uh, fantastic staff we work with, and we have offices both in Powell and here in Mansfield. So welcome. Um, why are we actually talking about CBD oil and this, this actually, um, we're, really, we're really excited to talk about this. We've probably had, I don't know, maybe 20 phone calls in the past couple of weeks. All of a sudden, this flipped, the switch just flipped, and people started asking, do you have CBD oil? Do you have CBD oil? So we've been looking at CBD oil for quite some time, um, but there were a lot of barriers involved, and that's probably why most of you are here tonight. There's a lot of misconceptions out there. What is it? Is it legal? Is it not legal? I don't want to use CBD oil because I'm going to get high, I'm going to pass, or I'm going to fail a drug test. So all these misconceptions are, are really why we're here tonight. Um, cannabis is pretty controversial, and the state of Ohio is sort of adding to that fun of controversy. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight will help clarify. Cannabis is a plant, so kind of like if you say, you know, I come from the McRae family. Cannabis is a plant. Inside that pl family of plants, we have a couple different types. Actually, there's many. We're going to break it down into two. We have industrial hemp and we have marijuana. Industrial hemp has been grown for centuries because of its fibrous nature. Um, it has high concentrations of CBD oil and very, very little to just trace amounts of THC. Marijuana, on the other hand, on the other hand, is actually oftentimes grown to get to the THC component, so higher concentrations, up to 30% in marijuana. So what we're actually focusing on is the industrial hemp, and that's on the right side. Industrial hemp, by its nature, has less than 0.03% of THC in it. So it's really a totally different thing. It's sort of like if you're from a family, your brother does one thing and you do the other thing. Um, the World Health Organization, which I think is it's great what they've said, they found no public health problems have ever been associated with the use of pure CBD. So again, it's very important to differentiate industrial hemp CBD traced to no THC, which is the hallucinogenic component of marijuana, and then we have marijuana CBD, which does have THC in it. Does that make sense to everybody, the two differences? Okay, that's really important. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about timelines just so we can see the historical component. Back in the 1940s, actually, CBD oil was isolated. Um, in the 70s, they, the Brits found a great way to put it into tincture form, and at that point, there were over 110 different medical uses. Um, at this time, cannabis and medical marijuana, or excuse me, any kind of marijuana was pretty much, you know, that was when things got really political, and for lots of different reasons, it was banned. In 2003, even during the time when medical marijuana and all forms of marijuana were illegal in the United States, the U.S. government obtained a patent on CBD because they know of its antioxidant and neuroprotective effects. They went to document in the patent about how impressive it is for use in things like strokes, seizures, um, Alzheimer's disease, and dementia. So the U.S. government actually has a patent on CBD oil. In 2013, if everybody, uh, or if anybody has heard of the little girl named Charlotte Fiki, so great little girl, we'll get to that story in a minute. Um, and then in two, 2014, we started to see some legalization. It's a very confusing picture because CBD from industrial hemp has absolutely no hallucinogenic or addictive potential, period. But it's still considered illegal in many places. 
if it comes from marijuana. So let's talk about how it works. This system is, um, again, it gets really, really exciting when you're a science nerd because this system is probably going to be one of the biggest developing systems that we learn how it works, especially with the ability of people to finally study and do research on CBD and medical marijuana. The endocannabinoid system is this very um, delicate communication system throughout the entire body. We have endocannabinoid receptors on every single organ in your brain, your heart, your skin, your blood vessels, all of your immune cells. All of your body is communicating very tightly together with this endocannabinoid system. So you actually have cannabinoids that you naturally make. So your body has these cannabinoids, they talk, they're receptors, they communicate. So what we're doing with CBD is we're actually using a plant-based form to enhance that communication network. And that's how this works. The primary function of the endocannabinoid system is to maintain a stable internal environment. What that means is your body needs to try to stay stable even when the external environment is not stable. And that's really the key because we live in an environment with chemicals and stressful exposure, uh, whether it's the foods we put in our body, the medicines we put in our body, the disease processes that happen, you know, our bodies make mistakes all the time. And it's also responsible for fixing those mistakes. If your balance is off in your system, those regulatory mechanisms, hey Bob, we've got a bad cell over here, we need to take care of it. If that communication isn't happening, then bad things start to happen. So that endocannabinoid system, it's really, really important for helping cells talk to each other. Um, at the site of injury, there's three main things that the endocannabinoids do. They decrease the inflammatory markers that are produced immediately. That is one of the key features. So when we start talking about the disease processes we are really excited about for CBD oil, it's important to keep in mind how it works. So decreasing those inflammatory markers is key. The next thing it does is it calms down the immune system. So when you have some kind of inciting injury, we have a decrease in the inflammatory markers. We have a calming of the immune system so it doesn't overreact. And when you think about people with autoimmune issues, that's this crazy overreaction of the immune system. So we need that calming environment. And it stabilizes the nerve cells. And if you stabilize a nerve cell, it's not going to be so excitable that it fires all the time. We know there's a lot of different pain syndromes. If you think about radiculopathies um, or nerve pain, it's this hyper-excitability of the nerves. Then you think of things like seizures. Seizures are just hyper-excitable nerves that continue to fire. So when we look at decreasing inflammation, stabilizing the nerve membrane, and calming down the immune system, you can see how the endocannabinoid system is crucial to be functioning properly. So, will CBD oil get me high? Not unless you smoke pot with it. <laughs> okay, so CBD oil from industrial hemp will never get you high. CBD oil is, again, has no THC in it. Um, if you've been avoiding trying CBD because you're afraid of how it's going to make you feel um, or afraid about passing a drug screen, that is probably the number one question when people call in. If I take it, will I pass my drug screen? Um, that's an easy answer for us. So is it legal? Touched on this a little bit before. Industrial hemp, CBD from industrial hemp, is federally legal across the United States. Every state has individual laws about CBD oil for marijuana. So that's where it gets a little bit messy. Industrial hemp CBD oil is good. Um, now that all being said, um, I don't want to vilify THC. There are some amazing studies that show that CBD oil in combination with varying amounts of THC are phenomenal for certain medical illnesses. So we're gonna see more of that develop. I think it's actually really probably a good place for Ohio to be to have CBD from industrial hemp introduced first because it allows people to get educated. It's not as confusing. If we have one choice and there's no THC involved and it's legal, it's pretty clear. But at the same time, we are gonna be getting a lot more information about THC. So we're gonna go through some of the health benefits. We have these kind of five main categories that we'll touch on as we go through. So it's anti-seizure, depression and anxiety relief, neuroprotection, pain management, and of course the cancer. So this is little Charlotte. Um, she was born completely normal. 
beautiful little girl, um, starting about age two, she started having seizures. She has a medical condition that's genetic, and by the time she was three years old, she could no longer walk, she could no longer talk very effectively, and then by the time she was four years old, she was having about 300 seizures a day. They oftentimes had a hard time quantifying it because sometimes she would seize for 30 minutes. So the amount of brain damage that happens when, you know, this happens is just horrible. So uh, they're from the United States. They did a lot of work. They moved to Colorado when Colorado allowed medical marijuana. Um, and basically using CBD oil, this is now Charlotte, and she still has a seizure, but maybe one a week. So they think about what would be, what would be her state right now if she hadn't been seizing for four years. So you'll hear a lot about Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web is a certain CBD oil tincture um, that does have some THC in it. But we have known for a very, very long time, since back in the 1880s, the benefits of CBD oil on seizures. Um, again, the US patent talks about its ability to help with seizures as well. It is, um, it is probably one of the hottest topics that people talk about. The Epilepsy Foundation supports the use of CBD oil in seizures. Um, now that being said, the dosage that you would use for that is very high. So it's not something that you're just going to pick up off a shelf and start dosing it and say this is fine. And then we have to consider its use in children, which is also very different because they metabolize different. And even though CBD, a lot of people say you can't overdose on CBD, you can't take too much CBD, there are interactions and there are things we have to look at. But we're very excited about that. We had a patient who came into the office and we were talking about something totally different. She has a son who, up until age five, totally normal, like great kid running and playing. He got sick. And when he got sick, he developed encephalitis. Once he developed encephalitis, he had some seizures and then he seized and seized and seized, and he developed um, chronic brain damage. So now he's 17 years old. He's a 17-year-old boy with the mind of a three-year-old, and he's a big kid. I think she said he was like 220 pounds, almost six feet tall, you know, a six-foot-tall three-year-old who still seizes, and she has to do full care for. He's been put on almost every seizure medication they can think of to try to keep him seizure-free. He's gained weight, he's diabetic, He's got the car dental caries, he's got mucosal membranes, you know, his teeth gums are super thick, all of these horrible things that we try to, you know, control seizures with. So um, the mom was able to get a hold of some CBD. She stopped all of his medicines after he had gone on that for two weeks. She's dosing it based on how she found some different things online, and he hasn't had a seizure in about three weeks. So there's some really amazing things out there. And when you think about what we have options at from a medication perspective and what we could potentially do with CBD oil, you can see why we get pretty excited about that. Depression and anxiety. Um, you know, this is a category where we know when people are put on antidepressants and they're on those for more than six months, we do have brain changes. We have chemical receptor changes. So the chances that someone's going to have a major depressive episode more than three times in the future is pretty darn high if somebody's been on antidepressants more than six months. The idea of changing your brain receptors with a medicine is not good. So the ability to have something that is more natural, that works with a normal homeostatic environment that your body already knows, you know, that is really exciting. In a survey they did in 2010, what they found is the top two things that people used CBD oil for were depression and anxiety. So it's one of those kind of tried and true I can't wait for the studies to come out so we have a lot more information with specific numbers and specific dosing. Um, we have general recommendations, but there's a lot of excitement about that. In 2015, there was a great meta-analysis showing that CBD has some great benefits for things like seasonal affective disorder, panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, generalized anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder, I think, is another really fantastic area to get into just because we have so many military people who have issues with PTSD, the ability to be able to help manage that. The other thing they found is that when people use CBD oil who have PD PTSD, post-traumatic stress, it actually has a way of rewiring the memory so that traumatic memories get pushed back. So not like buried deep in their memory, but literally kind of pushed away so they're not in the forefront of their mind. 
So there's some really neat neurologic changes that we see potentially coming. So now we're going to look at the neuroprotective re, um, effects that we see. There have been many, many studies, again, mostly from Israel and South America, showing the neuroprotective effects of CBD oil. We know that our government has known a long time about these, or else they wouldn't have established a patent the way they did. When they established the patent, and you'll be able, you can read it there on the side, I think it's fascinating because they actually get into some of the conditions. When they talk about neurologic damage following ischemic insults, such as stroke or trauma, in the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and HIV dementia, they're specifically naming things they know it works in. And I think that is so impressive. We already know it works in these. And when you think of the number of people who are going to have dementia in the future because we live longer, if we have the ability to modify that route or that progression, then I think it's, it's crucial that we study that. On the right side, or on your left side, you can see the different cannabinoids and neuropsychiatric disorders and the amount of studies that have been done about each of those conditions. It's a pretty small picture, but in the 70s, we saw there were, 50, were probably about 25 studies on epilepsy. You see up until about 2,000, the number of studies is about less than 50 for each category. And from 2,000 until 2016, you know, we're clear up to over 250 studies working with depression. So we have this incredible amount of information out there. It's just really a matter of getting some access to it. So then we think about chronic pain management. And if you think back to what we talked about, the three ways that the endocannabinoid system works, that anti-inflammatory component, stopping those nerves from being too excitable, stopping that firing and calming down the immune system, this is where chronic pain management comes into play. I think we all get a little bit skeptical when you see this ad pop up and it talks about the 520 things that CBD oil works for. Really what they're looking at is the fact that you have this system in your body and when you think of that communication that happens, if there's an abnormality and we can help regulate it, we see benefits in a whole lot of things. Chronic pain management is probably, um, again, one of the more exciting areas. They're able to take people who are on chronic opiates and decrease their doses significantly when you can use just the CBD oil. Again, and we don't have any risk of, of addictive potential when we do that. Um, unlike opiates, again, we have something that we can use that's incredibly safe, and it's been well studied for quite some period of time. Let's go to the next one, cancer. This one is, this one's also very fascinating. Um, according to the National Cancer Institute, CBD and other cannabinoids are useful in treating a multitude of types of cancers. We already know that it affects, in a great way, melanoma. There's some really amazing studies. You can see pictures of topically treated melanoma with CBD oil. Melanoma, prostate cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, cancer breast cancer, and brain cancer. In 2017, they published an amazing study about neuroblastoma, which is the most common childhood cancer we have, brain can solid cancer. So this is a cancer with uh, very poor outcomes, typically. And what they were able to find is that CBD shrank the tumor in every case they studied it in. They were able to duplicate that in vitro, so basically taking the cells, exposing them to CBD, and also in vivo. So we have some you know, some really great opportunities coming up to get more research and maybe coming up with some other treatments that aren't nearly as toxic as what we use right now. So other conditions, this is our list, you know, our screen is not big enough to put everything people typically think. Nicotine addiction is a, it's a neat one. Um, if anybody's read the studies on that, in 2016 they came up with a study and what they did is they gave um, two groups of people, there was a placebo group, uh, in, a, in a trial group, inhalers that had CBD oil in it, and they just told the groups, whenever you feel like taking um, a cigarette, then just use this first. And what they found without anybody knowing, of course, you have your control groups, there was a 40% decrease in the amount of cigarettes smoked during that time frame. They found that after they stopped the inhalers, that effect continued thereafter. So when you think of all the people who are trying to quit smoking, if we would be able to use CBD oil to help them accomplish that, that would be fantastic. Um, insomnia, uh, 
in that survey where depression and anxiety were the first two things. The third thing was insomnia that people would use it for arthritis, joint disorders. In this practice, we are very excited about the ability to use it for autoimmune issues and trying to restore that homeostatic balance. Um, one thing we see over and over again is this recurrent of autoimmune issues, particularly autoimmune thyroid, although we also work with a lot of um, gut-related autoimmune issues and different arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. So unlike this, the um, websites you'll see out there, if you pop up on somebody's ad saying, buy our CBD oil, there are some concerns we do have, and it's important to keep this in mind. So dosing is very important. Um, we have so many people out there on medications, and to know which ones are going to interact is key. So cannabidiol works with the cytochrome P450 system. That system, that name, it was kind of floating around more commonly about five years ago, maybe closer to 10 years ago when grapefruit juice was the big talk. You know, you gotta be careful grapefruit juice when you're taking your cholesterol medicines and your blood pressure medicines. Well, this, this inhibits the same system. So if you have somebody who's on a super high dose of a cholesterol medication and they're taking CBD oil, they need to be monitored because it can start affecting their liver enzymes and it can start affecting their system. So those people might actually get worsening muscle pain because of the effect of the statin not breaking down in their system. So what we strongly encourage is people can typically take the general doses of CBD oil, again, these very general dosing levels, very safely. But if somebody has a medical condition that requires a higher dose, or they find that they've titrated to this, the upper level of the basic dosing, we recommend they come in and talk about it first because there is personalized dosing that needs to be done. So when we look at the list, again, it's, it's a big list, and that's not even all of them. Um, how many people take an ibuprofen or an Aleve every day? How many people are on medicines like Prevacid and Prilosec every day? Those are all in the categories of things we work about, uh, we worry about. Antihistamines, you know, we've had this crazy allergy season so all these things can affect your cannabidiol levels. What are the side effects? This is the really nice part. You know, usually we would have like this rolling screen of side effects for medications, but really pretty limited. <laughs> Nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and bloating. Um, I kind of had to grasp and dig really deep to find those because those are few and far between. I'm surprised we don't see like headache and rash because you get those with anything. You know, placebo group has headache and rash. So um, vomiting. And nausea, we actually use CBD in those scenarios. So the fact that maybe it causes that in some people, it can certainly happen. The biggest thing we worry about are interaction with those other medications, either by not breaking them down, such as anti-epileptics or seizure medicines. Um, heart rhythm medicines, you do not want to have those levels fluctuating. Those can be pretty toxic medications. So it's just very, very important that um, if you're taking above the general dose, you need to have a medical consultation to go over that information. So where can I get it and what should I look for? On everybody's seat, you have a piece of paper and on one side of the piece of paper talks about the three important things that we always think about. Um, first of all is how it's made and the purity. So um, for instance, we, you know, we've been interested in CBD oil for a long time, but finding a place that we felt was reputable um, we found a company that works from a single farm. It's a non-GMO organic farm down in Tennessee. I don't know if any of you know Amy Grant, but it ap actually happens to be her family farm. So they have um, the largest hemp farm in Tennessee, and we call it more of a farm-to-bottle approach. So there's no interactions in between where it's not accounted for. The third-party testing shows its purity. So anyway, it's just important, no matter where you get your CBD oil from, that you know exactly where it comes from, who tests it, and how long it takes for the distribution and to get to you, because there's also some breakdown issues there as well. Uh, there was a study published by JAMA last year, and out of the 200 brands of industrial hemp out there, they found that more than two-thirds of the products contained either higher or lower concentrations than what they said on the bottle, or they had a significant component of THC in them. So again, it's just really, really important to know where you're getting. I wanted to talk a little bit about single molecule CBD and then full spectrum. 
So that might be something you come across. Typically, full spectrum CBD oil is um, a fair amount more expensive because it has, let's, let's move back up one second. So CBD, we call this category of cannabinoids CBD. CBD is kind of generic. It's kind of like saying you guys all drive cars, but you might drive a Honda, you might drive a Ford, you might drive a Chevy. So CBD is like cars in the terms of oil. Full spectrum, there's actually CBG, CBA, CBE. There's all these different cannabinoids. So full spectrum takes the industrial hemp plant, compresses it out, gets all of the oils released. That's full, sec full spectrum CBD oil. Single isolate means they take just CBD. So in that is only CBD. There's some thought that the full spectrum does offer some unique benefits in people who require that. Again, the research is still out there, who's gonna require what, which disease conditions, but there is a difference between full spectrum and single isolate if you come across that. How much should I take and when does it start to work? So what I put up there is really the general dosing. So somebody says I don't sleep well. Somebody says I have some anxiety. Somebody says I have seasonal defective disorder. Someone says I feel more aches and pains than I think I should. Somebody who says I was just told last year that I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Somebody who has um, changes in sensation or muscle weakness. Those generalized dosings are, are for that. And then you'll see also the chronic pain management guidelines. If you get to those doses and on your sheet of paper, it tells you how to titrate up. Actually, those are on the table outside. Um, it tells you how exactly you wanna titrate up on taking the CBD oil. If you get to that level and you're not finding the therapeutic benefits, you need to come in and talk about it because we might need to go higher, but we need to make sure that that's gonna be safe and we don't have any other issues. When does it start to work? So sublingual, which means you take the drops, you just put them underneath your tongue. You typically hold them there for 20 seconds and then you can just swallow it. it has its effects typically 20 to 40 minutes and it has benefits about four to six hours. It has a half-life of nine hours, so we usually say dose it twice a day, although you can see based on how long it lasts, you could dose it more frequently if you're, if you're careful of the total milligrams you get in a day. Topically, which is another exciting way to apply this or take this. Um, it takes about one hour, so understandably, when you put it on the skin, it takes a while to absorb, get into your bloodstream, but then we have some nice effects for five years, or excuse me, five hours. So if somebody has knee issues or sprained area, if, if we are talking about um, skin lesions and eczema, you can actually apply it topically for that.